drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered to you by edipedia world previous uh, set of lectures we discussed about the heat treatment processes today we will be discussing about a new topic we will be basically discussing about some of the metal alloys that exist to begin with let us see this uh, chart where the whole uh, metal alloy system has been segregated into major categories now metal alloys are divide, divided into two basic categories one is ferrous alloys and the other is non ferrous alloys ferrous uh, relates to the iron based alloys and non ferrous rest of the metallic alloys so why is it so important that we divide the metal into two classes just based on one metal that is just based on iron this is so because iron is one of the most predominantly used metallic system uh, that is uh, the very reason why we studied iron carbon phase diagram in details because iron is used in many many applications also the fact that iron is readily available in earth's crust helps to the fact that iron is used uh, in large number of applications now once we divide metal alloys into ferrous and non ferrous systems the ferrous system can further be divided into steel and cast iron steel is basically iron with uh, less than 2.1% of carbon less than 2.1 weight percent carbon okay and cast iron if you remember from the phase diagram is above 2.1% but uh, below 6.67%. Normally the cast iron ranges between 2.5 to around 4.5%, not more than that. Okay. Now that we know uh, there is steel and cast iron, let us see under the steel what are the different segregations which we can have. Now steel though it already has very low carbon if you think in weight percent but this in itself is quite a high amount 2.1 percent carbon is quite a high amount uh, why so because uh, it gets the carbon percent gets saturated with cementite at 6.67 percent so with respect to that this is already around 30 percent right thereby steel can further be segregated as low carbon steel low alloy and high alloy okay this is this refers to lower amount of alloying elements uh, rather not carbon lower amount of alloying elements and this has higher amount of additional alloying elements like chromium nickel uh, manganese sulfur those things now in low alloy steel we can have low carbon medium carbon and high carbon okay in low carbon is basically less than 0.025% medium carbon is 0.25 to 0.6% high carbon is 0.6 to 1.4% as you can see though we have mentioned that steel has less than 2.1% for practical applications we do not normally go above 1.3 1.4% that is the highest amount of carbon normally used in steel okay then as i said the high alloy steel will have a lot of other alloying elements in quite a high percentage mainly nickel chromium manganese and uh, sometimes rare earths are also added now let us see each of them in further details i, I will not go into these things for the time being uh, the name kind of suggests plain is uh, no other additional alloying elements this has some other alloying elements heat treatable means it can be heat treated tool steel are used for tool making and stainless steel is a special kind of steel which does not normally corrode it is uh, quite resistant to stain okay let us begin our discussion with low carbon steel as i mentioned in the previous slide low carbon steel has carbon percentage less than 0.25 percent 
which is basically very low amount of carbon okay and the with uh, the carbon content being so low the material or the steel is not very responsive to heat treatment because uh, the microstructure of low carbon steel is mainly ferritic steel it's mainly alpha uh, phase there is not much of cementite or carbon to play around with thereby heat treatment is not a very effective method for strengthening mechanisms or martensitic conversion thereby for strengthening of low carbon steel mainly cold working is used you can cold work the material to increase the strength of low carbon steel since it is non responsive to heat treatment okay now the microstructure of low carbon steel let me draw the phase diagram something like this right this is 0. Point, uh, i guess 02% and this is 0.76% we are talking in the uh, regime less than 0.25% okay in this region so suppose we are at 0.2% let's imagine okay at 0.2% what will happen is suppose you go to the austenitic single phase austenitic region and we cool it in the dual phase region we will have the alpha ferrite and the gamma austenite when it hits the eutectoid temperature the gamma becomes of composition eutectoid thereby that produces perlite that is the dual phase lamellar austenite uh, ferrite plus cementite therefore what we have in uh, the low carbon steel is ferrite plus perlite ferrite from the dual phase and perlite from the eutectoid conversion okay so this is basically the microstructure of microstructure of low carbon steel now due to the absence of carbon and uh, the chances of heat treatment being not possible there is only a, a range till which you can increase the strength of the material by cold working thereby the inherent strength of low carbon steel is quite low low strength material but on the flip side uh, what is the good property of low carbon steel that it has very very good ductility okay and this good ductility can be used for formability process forming processes and uh, it also has uh, quite a high degree of toughness fine due to its good ductility and toughness low carbon steel is used to make automobile bodies because for automobile bodies you need to, a material which is quite malleable right it's also used as sheets used in uh, pipeline buildings bridges and uh, such kind of applications so we see that uh, depending on the application if it meets our requirement that is if the application does not really require very high amount of strength but requires good ductility then low carbon steel is a good place to go to now plain carbon steel has very low percent of other alloying elements fine whereas low carbon steel as if you remember from previous slide had two categories one was plain and one was hsla we will discuss this now but plain is where carbon percentage is also low and other alloying elements are also almost absent whereas on the other hand high strength low alloy or hsla steel belongs to the low carbon range this is low carbon steel itself but it has a large amount of other alloying elements okay so hsla has in addition to carbon we have copper vanadium nickel molybdenum present so these are the alloying elements which provides the strength to this low carbon steel 
the total amount of alloying elements in HSLA can go as high as 10%. Okay, so all of these alloying elements combined can be to an extent of around 10%. The presence of the other alloying elements increases the strength of the steel. Okay, so these HSLA strength is better than plain carbon steel, and uh, but also this steel, high strength, low alloy steel, remains ductile and machinable still because the carbon content is really really low. So. Though the strength increases, it does not really compromise as much with the ductility of the material. And these pres uh, presence of the additional alloying elements, it has an added advantage. What is the advantage? It increases the resistance to corrosion. High strength low alloy steel has better resistance to corrosion than plain carbon steel. Okay, so overall speaking, high strength low alloy steel seems to have a bet much better combination of properties than low carbon steel. But the fact that you need to add additional alloying elements which can be expensive, so the economic factor can come into play while choosing whether we need to, uh, whether we are going to use plain carbon steel or high strength low alloy steel. Now let us see medium carbon steel. Medium carbon steel has carbon content between 0.25% to 0.6%. So even medium carbon steel is in the hypoeutectoid region. Hypoeutectoid steel, right? But this has more amount of carbon than low carbon steel. Now this being having a higher percentage of carbon is a heat treatable kind of steel. This can be heat treated because of the higher carbon percentage. Therefore, the main mechanism of strengthening is no longer the cold working mechanism. Rather, we go for heat treating and martensite formation. Now, the martensite which is formed, if you remember from previous lecture, needs to be tempered to, uh, to have sufficient ductility for practical applications. Thereby, tempered martensite is the microstructure which is used when we are using carbon steel, uh, rather medium carbon steel. So, tempered martensite is what is normally used. Obviously, as the carbon percentage is higher, the uh, medium carbon steel is stronger than plain iron or also low carbon steel. It has slightly less ductility and toughness than plain iron or low carbon steel. Right? Now further going to high carbon steel, high carbon steel has carbon content between 0.6% and 1.4%. So it can either be hypo eutectoid or it can be hyper eutectoid. Hypo is uh, 0.6 to 0.76. Hyper is greater than 0.76 or 0.76 to 1.4 percent, right? Now, since the carbon percentage is very, very high, this is the hardest and the strongest kind of carbon steel, but it compromises with the ductility. It has the least ductility of different carbon steels, okay? Also, the high amount of carbon present helps it to undergo martensitic transformation. The martensite that can be formed can be really hard phase. Thereby, it is used normally in the hardened and tempered condition, just like medium carbon steel. High carbon steel is also hardened and tempered. Now, high carbon steel can be used in as in plain carbon condition also, or it can be alloyed with uh, elements like chromium, vanadium, tungsten, molybdenum and the addition of these alloying elements helps make what is known as tool steel. So high carbon plus these alloying elements give real real hard toughness uh, rather hardness to the material, wear resistance to the material and that can be used as tool steel. 
now what is exactly that uh, gives the that amount of hardness and wear resistance when we add these alloying elements what happens is the carbon in high carbon steel reacts with these alloying elements which is added to form wear resistant carbides carbides are formed these carbides are very hard and ve has very good wear resistance thereby they can be used in making tools okay so these uh, this gives you a uh, idea about the different kind of carbon steels low carbon steel is very soft but has high strength medium carbon steel is heat treatable has medium amount of strength and ductility a compromise between both high carbon steel has very high strength but compromises largely with the ductility and it can be made very wear resistant by adding different alloying elements now if we go to if we add certain alloying elements in very large amount then we can get what is known as stainless steel this is highly resistant to corrosion stainless steel is highly resistant to corrosion what are the elements that needs to be added to get stainless steel mainly chromium chromium has to be more than 11% this kind of generates stainless steel but in addition to chromium also in many of the cases nickel and molybdenum is added and the addition of nickel and molybdenum enhances the corrosion resistance further so the main alloying elements in addition to carbon that is present in stainless steel is chromium it's a compulsory alloying element needs to be present nickel molybdenum these two are not compulsory but adds to the cor corrosion resistance further now stainless steel can be of three categories three kind of stainless steel can be present we ha might have martensitic microstructure in the stainless steel ferritic microstructure or austenitic microstructure okay now austenitic and ferritic microstructure can't be heat treated these two are non heat treatable stainless steel therefore to increase the strength they are cold worked okay and uh, what decides uh, what kind of stainless steel will be there it depends on what happens is if you remember the iron carbon phase diagram again this is 727 degrees right gamma region alpha plus uh, cementite ferrite region now what happens is addition of certain alloying elements can expand this gamma region or the austenitic region even till room temperature okay now if the austenite region expands even till room temperature then the type of stainless steel we get on the addition of those alloying elements is known as austenitic stainless steel if it expands the alpha or the ferrite region to, to room temperature which is ideally the room temperature uh, microstructure then we have ferritic stainless steel and if heat treatment results in martensitic structure then we have martensitic stainless steel okay a very easy way to identify whether the kind of stainless steel is austenitic or ferritic is to see whether it is magnetic or not out of the three austenitic stainless steel is only non magnetic non magnetic stainless steel rest two are of the magnetic kind of stainless steel they are attracted by magnets fine so with this we'll conclude our discussion on the different kind of steel and uh, uh, carbon alloys iron carbon alloys next lecture we will discuss about different kind of cast iron cast iron basically belongs to the category where the carbon percentage is greater than 2.1% we will be discussing that in the next lecture till then have a great day goodbye